Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at a Poison Caterpillar build. So this setup is going to be a little bit more thematic than usual, and it's going to allow us to do some kind of interesting things. This is also going to be one of the more advanced builds that I showcase, and I'll be talking about kind of why it's more advanced, as also some potential options for newer players to run this and still be effective with it. So a quick disclaimer, this is going to be another longer intro. This build is fairly complex, so I have a lot to say about it. If you want to go ahead and skip ahead to the PvP content, feel free to use the timestamps and skip to the invasions. The reason we're calling this the Poison Caterpillar build is because it goes through a transformation as the fight progresses. So it's going to start out as a pretty straightforward Poison build. We'll have Poisonous Mist on our main hand, and then we have the Venomous Fang in our offhand. And if we don't proc Poison with the Ash of War, we'll be able to potentially get the Poison proc with our offhand weapon, since that is going to do 130 Poison buildup, which is quite substantial. And it will deliver the Deadly Poison buildup, which is very strong in short bursts, so it does more damage per tick than regular poison. Once the poison's been procced, we're getting an AR boost from both the Mushroom Crown as well as the Kindred Rot's Exaltation Talisman, and that's going to be really nice because we're going to change over from the regular Flamberge to a Flamberge with Bloody Slash, and we'll also be switching over to the Reduvia in our offhand. And now we've transformed into a full-fledged Arcane build, where we have 93 blood loss buildup on our offhand, and then 107 on our main hand. So very high blood loss potential, and we're also running a setup with Bloody Slash, which does massive amounts of damage, especially if you're already boosting your AR with the poison proc that you've just recently got. Part of the strategy here is going to be switching over to the two-handed moveset, because the running heavy attack with the Flamberge does a pseudo combo with the Bloody Slash attack if your opponent rolls out. And I want to give a huge shout out to Weizus for just kind of making a whole bunch of different pseudo combos associated with Bloody Slash, uh, much more well known with their recent video. So uh, a big shout out to them and I'll post a link to their video in the description. So a big lesson that I learned while using this build is to not be over committal to the plan that you're trying to implement. The ideal setup is going to be a nice early poison proc and then you switch over to the arcane build. Ideally, you either land a blood loss proc with the Helis, or you're able to, you know, swap over to the Flamberge with Bloody Slash. Maybe you land that running attack and pseudo combo it with the Ash of War while you still have that poison proc AR boost. But that's a lot of steps, and your opponent may not be playing in such a way that allows for this to happen. And what I found myself doing is really trying to shoehorn my plan into every situation and getting punished for it. So ideally you should just be playing with the normal kind of reaction and discipline that you would, you know, with any other build, but then when the time comes around to make the change, you know, you've landed your poison proc, then you switch over to the blood loss buildup. And that's going to be a much stronger play style than if, you know, you're being really aggressive with the poison, just trying to land that, or you've just gotten your poison proc, so you play really aggressive because you know you have only 20 seconds while your AR is boosted. I don't recommend playing like that. I recommend, you know, having this plan, executing it as it makes sense to, and not really trying to force it into every scenario just because you have a certain high damage output situation that you want to create for yourself. Moving on to the stats for this build, we're going to be running this at level 138. We'll be putting 57 points into Arcane, 20 into Dex and Strength, 30 into Endurance, and 60 into Vigor. And that should set us up pretty well to, you know, be able to invade the majority of the player base. It's at 125 and 150 and give us enough points in arcane mostly just so that we can accomplish what we want to with both poison and blood loss. We'll also be running the mushroom crown obviously since we want that AR boost. We'll be running the tree sentinel armor white reed gauntlets and tree sentinel greaves to hit the 101 poise breakpoint and then our other talismans are going to be kindred rot's exaltation, the great jar's arsenal, bulgo talisman as well as shard of alexander. The shard of alexander can be swapped around. The spear talisman is going to be great if you're going to be running the Bloody Helis. I definitely recommend that particular talisman with that weapon. And, you know, if you're not landing the poison proc, then switching that over to the spear talisman is also going to be a good option because the Bloody Helis does have a very solid Ash of War. So between those two things, you should be set up well to kind of a, make adjustments on the fly and deliver strong blows both with the poison setup and with the blood loss setup. 
So one thing you might have noticed about my inventory is that I have my main hand weapon in the first slot and then my offhand weapon in the last slot. And that's going to speed up swap times, especially if you know you're going to be swapping both weapons. So you can switch using the left and right bumper rather than using the back button and then swapping between left and right hand weapons you know using these slots so i find this to be a little bit faster and a little bit more fluid so i definitely recommend doing that and then if you have the muscle memory set up like that after this build you can do the same thing for your talisman slots where the first one is going to be in the normal spot but then your second swap around talisman is actually going to be in the last slot so you continue to kind of use that left bumper setup in a way that doesn't get confusing between talisman swaps and main hand and offhand weapon swaps Another element of this build that I wanted to mention is something that's more in line with one of my recent videos where I kind of talk about having a solution for every problem in an invasion and kind of being able to approach both uh, passive play, neutral, and aggressive play with different setups. And I think the main hand flamberge and offhand either dagger or fist weapon is going to be pretty strong for neutral or defensive play. The fact that you have these kind of wide sweeping attacks that can and stun multiple opponents at the same time is going to be great and the fact that you have a quick offhand weapon is going to be nice just if you get a nice stun and then want to deliver uh, a quick hit or a couple of quick successive hits that's going to be pretty good so this is going to be solid for neutral or defensive play you definitely can aggress with the flambers something like the crouching attack is going to come out quite quickly and it's also a nice anti-air but it can be difficult. So we are going to have access to the Bloody Helis, which gets very solid arcane scaling, and it's a very, very strong option for being really aggressive, which is going to be very necessary in some circumstances. So this is just kind of the general setup I'm recommending, where you have access to a strong arcane weapon in your main hand, and then obviously you can supplement that with the Reduvia in the offhand, or just use the two-handed moveset, which I very much enjoy. I also recommend not sleeping on the heavy attack. The heavy attack is very good, and I think most people will kind of rely on the running heavies as well as maybe the occasional jumping heavy, but they won't use the neutral heavy as much as they should. And being able to vary your timing between light attacks and heavy attacks just from neutral can be a very strong option, especially in duels. So I did mention that we would have the option to run this as more of a beginner or intermediate build. And so for that, I'm gonna recommend using consumables to proc poison. So you can use poison pots or you can use poison stone clumps. And these are going to be good options to get your opponent poisoned and proc the AR boost. And we're not going to be doing any swapping. We'll just be using the kind of straightforward blood loss setup. So the Occult Flamberge as well as the Reduvia in our offhand and main hand. And this isn't really going to add the element of surprise that this is, you know, really a, a bleed build. But it is going to be a good way to boost the AR and allow you to deliver a lot of damage with a, a very strong setup. You can also definitely run the Bloody Helis. This is a bit more of a high skill weapon, so the Flamberge is going to be a little bit more solid. But if you want to swap over to the Helis or even a, just a regular Thrusting Sword, that can be a good option too if you're encountering some passive play. Another quick note, I did want to mention that I am aware that you can proc poison on yourself by using a number of different consumables and then just dropping into your menu and healing your poison with the bolus. This is a very easy way to get an AR boost at the beginning of a fight, but it's not really my play style. So I just wanted to mention that I am aware, but it's not gonna be what you were using in this video. All right, so I know that was quite a bit of information. I definitely appreciate you sticking around for this longer intro. If you have any questions about the build or would like to see any future builds, let me know in the comments below. And if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I definitely appreciate it. That's all I've got. So let's go ahead and jump into the invasions as well as the arena content. All right, so jumping into our first invasion, we're gonna be in Stormvale. And this is definitely a gank setup. They've cleared out pretty much all the PVE. They're absolutely waiting for players to come in and to just chase them down with a combination of a heavy thrusting sword with giant hunt, as well as a phantom and a host that both have black blade which is going to be, or black knife rather, which is going to be very difficult to deal with as that's something that can be kind of just sent in from behind as we see right there where, you know, I'm going to try to pressure one of the phantoms, but I'm getting hit by this projectile that 
does gradual chip damage after it hits. It also delivers phantom hits frequently, which can be quite annoying and doesn't allow me to get back to full HP. So a very strong pressuring tool from the phantom in the back. And we're also seeing some strong pressure coming from the phantom with the HTS. So we really need to back off and find a new situation. This is not working well. We've got you know, no PVE to help us. We're kind of discovering that as we traverse through the level. And what we really want is some nice walls, some, you know, maybe tight corners to deliver burst damage. And so we're moving towards this room that exists near the, the lift over here. So we go back in towards this room and that allows us to get a nice turn and burn style attack with the Ash of War Poisonous Mist. And we don't land it, but we do get the AR boost. And that moves us nicely into our next attack, which is going to be Bloody Slash. And there we're able to just one shot the phantom so that's going to be something that you are able to do fairly often when you do land that poison proc with the ar boost it's going to be a very strong ash of war especially against a player that's not wearing a lot of armor if you get that blood loss proc at the same time as the just bloody slash landing then you're going to be doing massive damage and now we do get hit with a few more of the uh black blade ashes of war and we do want to back off a little bit so we're going to use the stairs to our advantage and here we have a very well-timed sleep pot that allows us to both hit the player then they get slept so we get another free hit in and we do go for just the offhand reduvia hit that gets the blood loss proc and takes care of that phantom as well and now it's just a one-on-one -on -one with the host they're using the bleed bugs which are not really going to cut it when they have this level of pressure coming in from the invader and we're going to be just you know kind of patient here letting them burn through some fp and wait for good opportunities to deliver our last uh, attack with bloody slash and there we do get the pseudo combo with the running heavy attack followed up by bloody slash and that's going to be enough to deliver all the damage we need to win that invasion so moving on to our next one we're going to be in the forbidden lands and this can be kind of a tricky area to play both as an invader but also for the hosts and the phantoms where there's pretty strong pve that's kind of hard to see and there are a lot of things to kind of get caught up on. There's, you know, cliff sides and whatnot. And we're going to be using that to our advantage as much as possible. So we see Quick Step coming in from the player with the Gugs. And that's going to be a little bit scary because it's going to make our job much harder. But just because it's hard to hit them if they're using Quick Step. And the Crouch Pokes are going to come out very, very quickly out of Quick Step. So they're also playing fairly disciplined, which is a little bit annoying as an invader. We can see they don't just rush in and get hit with Poisonous Mist. They, you know, back off and let the kind of players in the back deliver some chip damage. So we're going to do a, a little bit of a tactical retreat here. We know that that jump is needed to get to this next little section, and this is going to kind of use gravity as the great equalizer. So first we see one phantom use their Ash of War right off the cliff and fall to their death. So definitely a good call to kind of force our opponents to chase us into an area that's not really fun to be in for them. And then we see, you know, gravity doing... Uh, just a great job again as our other phantom opponent rolls off the edge right when, you know, the pressure kind of was relieved from the attacks that I was going for. And now we have just the host and they've switched up their situation a little bit. They've decided all they want to do is use fist attacks and to just kind of appreciate the play style that they're going for. We're going to go ahead, switch over to a main hand shield and just wait for a couple quick fist attacks to come our way and go for the parry here, switch over to our Miser Record and get the repost. So that's going to be a, a nice 3v1 where we really use the environment to you know, alleviate a lot of the pressure that comes with our opponents. It's good to go for things like knowledge checks about the environment when you have really aggressive opponents because oftentimes they will be so focused on you they won't pay attention to just kind of the landscape. And this next invasion is going to be just a, a great example of when everything kind of goes right. So first we get the poison proc, we go ahead and switch over to our flamberge with Bloody Slash. We obviously should have popped that bubble before going for that Ash of War, but it doesn't matter. We're able to hyper armor trade with Bloody Slash, and Bloody Slash absolutely gets some nice hyper armor and just come out um, with a, a successful moment there against the Phantom. And here uh, is totally unnecessary, but I really just for some reason wanted to get the poison proc with the offhand Venomous Fangs. So we do finally get that poison proc, switch back over to Bloody Slash, and here we're able to deliver that for 1k damage and just finish off that last opponent there. So that's kind of best case scenario where you do get the poison procs in quick succession and followed up with a successful Bloody Slash. It's definitely not 
the necessary you know play style it's good to be more fluid and just kind of react to the situation but sometimes your opponents allow for it so this next invasion we almost get backstabbed as we get a great bow shot off on one of the phantoms and this is actually the host that is playing against me right now and they were pretty competent with the great sword so definitely some respect there and they were doing a great job of pressuring however they did have some phantoms in the mix that were a little bit more aggressive and uh, maybe a little bit newer to the game. So we do see a parry attempt from one of the phantoms, and we also are taking note that they don't have heavy armor on, which means landing our poison procs or our blood loss procs are going to be easier since uh, usually heavy armor has higher either like robustness or whatever stat is involved with preventing you from getting different status effect buildups. So that's always going to be something that's going through our mind as we run this build that we really want to focus on players that are, you know, wearing lighter armors, uh, probably before the players that are wearing full goat or something. So we're backing off a little bit, seeing if we can get some chip damage off with, you know, freezing pots or poisonous mist, just boost our AR, lower their physical damage resistance, anything we can do to kind of uh, take advantage of the range that we have with in this setup. I always like to say that uh, you really want to either, you, you want to take advantage of every second of an invasion. So whether that means, you know, applying a buff, getting yourself in a better situation tactically, throwing frost pots so that you have, you know, your opponent's frostbitten, just whatever you can do to improve your situation in every moment, the, the better off you're going to be because there is very consistent pressure uh, from pretty much all angles in a situation like this. So if you can really be maximizing your efficiency, that's going to be awesome. So there we go for an Estus, and we do get punished from Taker's Flame. That was fairly predictable, and moving into a situation that would have been a little bit better probably would have made more sense, but we are able to get a nice Hyper Armor trade, deliver Poisonous Mist, which does land the Poison proc on the Phantom, and the Poison is actually what finishes off that Phantom. So, you know, Poison is not the strongest status effect in the game, but it is one that can really help you out in some clutch moments and having it in the mix, especially on an arcane build is fantastic. So moving on, we're back at Stormvale and this was a group I played against a couple times. They were very keen on using uh, Power Stance Cross Naginatas. They also had some um, madness in the mix. So uh, definitely an, an interesting group set up for ganking for sure. I believe they had the Taunter's Tongue on as well. So uh, I'm not really pulling any punches for them. Here we do go for the swap with the Scythe with Stormcaller on it. That can be a great kind of substitute for the Stormhawk Axe. Since you are running an Arcane build, uh, the Stormhawk Axe is not going to be amazing because it does get scaling in Dexterity and Strength, which you aren't running. So, you know, having a, an, op an option that, you know, delivers a lot of poise damage that you can kind of spam in a tight corner and also delivers a lot of blood loss is going to be nice. So here it's a very close call, but we're able to use the PvE to prevent these players from coming in and delivering the last bit of madness damage that they'd like to. And there we're able to get the blood loss proc and knock our opponent out of the air and deliver a decent amount of damage. Here we do get the poison proc as well, so our AR is buffed. We get back to full health and now we go for bloody slash as a trick with the madness um, Ash of War there. So a, a great moment there where we kind of calculated that we would be okay. We had, you know, a, a good spot for our, our madness meter and we were able to deliver pretty much all the damage we needed to in that single moment and really utilize kind of the, the full setup of this build. We will also note there that we get a poison proc. So that is an issue that still exists in the game where if you have something like Poisonous Mist and you switch off that Ash of War uh, to a different Ash of War, but using the same weapon, that status effect on the blade still exists. So I'm not really using that intentionally. Most of the time, my opponents are already poisoned by the time I make that swap, but that is a bug that exists. So if you're wondering why that opponent did get poisoned there, that's kind of what was going on. I'm not really trying to abuse it, but I'm also not really going to just change my entire setup because that bug exists and there's a chance that I'll get a random poison proc in there. I don't think it's, you know, game breaking in any capacity, but it's something you should be aware of. So moving on to this next one, when we see our opponent going for a lot of giant hunt attacks, which can be kind of scary, but are also fairly telegraphed. So it's, you know, something we need to keep an eye on, but not something that is 
going to absolutely wreck us if we you know are, are careful and we do have some repeated pokes with the bolt of grand sacks coming from another phantom and we find it prudent to back off a little bit uh, go for some more tactical retreats in this area where we know that the pve is pretty strong and here we're hoping to knock our opponent out of grail's roar before they were able to deliver the damage they did get the damage but before they could heal we could you know continuously pressure them go for that jumping attack and finish them off and at this point we have noticed that this player is using a shield so we find it prudent to switch over to the mace talisman which is going to allow us to deliver more stamina damage when our opponents are blocking and we do get that guard break and we also get the ar boost right before the repost so uh, a really nice moment there where you know kind of uh our setup really comes together and our talisman swaps are kind of on point. So we see a ton of latency from this opponent here. There's some serious phantom range from their CGS and we need to kind of play it carefully. Fortunately, we can kind of back them up into an area within this level that has some PVE and we're just trying to be patient. We're not trying to get chipped too much by their bestial sling and, you know, back off when they start springing with the CGS. I think uh, a very common mistake is to try to win priority against something like a CGS, but if they're swinging, you should really be just trying to roll out in most cases because they aren't going to likely run out of stamina for quite a while and if they're just still swinging, it's it's going to be hard to deal with. So there we get a nice cheeky hit with the offhand dagger. So Reduvia doing 98 blood loss buildup is going to be very strong. And that blood loss buildup is going to be enough to take care of that host there, as well as the PvE coming in. So this next invasion was just one where we spawn into the world and we feel like everything goes right. So that doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's really nice. We see Reduvia Bloodblade coming out from the Phantom here. We decide to kind of go for that chase down, go for a nice swap over to our HTS, and that's going to be enough to finish off that Phantom in very quick fashion. Uh, not totally, I guess we were thinking about maybe parrying this opponent, but definitely wasn't necessary. We also have a Zweihander on this build, which means that we can go to a non-parryable weapon whenever we need to, and here we get a nice ravioli step for the finish. So not necessary, but uh, a fun moment there. And this next invasion is going to be a very long invasion that we've clipped down into a much shorter invasion, mostly because there's, there's one key moment that I want to kind of highlight, and then we'll just kind of skip to the end because it's you know, was a very long invasion where we did a lot of chasing, we did a lot of attempts to kind of kill a player that was very, very difficult for me to kill. They had like 21 HP for a very long time. So that's the moment right there. I don't frequently um, land that type of backstab where you backstep into a running attack from your opponent. It needs to be kind of something with a lot of straightforward horizontal movement, but that's a backstep that you can actually turn into a backstab if you, you know, time everything right. So I was very happy about that, wanted to include it in the showcase. And here we can see the Phantom with 21 HP uh, doing a phenomenal job of staying alive. And they were at 21 HP for maybe like a full three minutes, uh, and they were incredibly frustrating to try and kill. So. I switch over to the Great Bow just because fan daggers haven't worked, HTS hasn't worked, and at this point there's some PvE in the mix as well as another invader. So finally we get that last bit of damage off on the Phantom, and here we're mostly just trying to stay alive. We've burned through a lot of Estus at this point. We're going to kind of allow the Phantom, or the invader to just kind of do their thing we don't really want to get in their way we also have a weapon that has a wide arcing swing so we don't want to hit them in the process and my idea there is just to send the elevator up just because that meant that the host would have nowhere to go potentially for a short period of time while the two elevators were kind of um, in limbo and I felt that that would be a, a good use of my time while I let the co-invader kind of just do their thing and it worked out successfully there. So uh, a nice moment there against a duo that was uh, fairly tricky to kill and I was just very happy with that backstab. So um, moving on, we have a, a pretty quick invasion here and we can just see how much damage Bloody Slash does. So that did about 1200 damage. We had hit them with uh, a poison proc, which meant it, it showed 1700, um, but the poison proc as well as the hit with the sword beforehand was you know, doing roughly 500 damage. So. Uh, 1200 hit there to do all their HP, which meant there might have been some gas left in the tank in terms of damage. So uh, a pretty absurd amount of damage you can possibly do with Bloody Slash, especially when you get the AR buff, uh, buff that is, sorry. Uh, moving on, we have 
a little bit of a chaotic invasion. This is going to be a 3v1 in the Brace of the Hallowed Tree area. And we see a lot of potential damage coming from the Phantom running Morgoth's Curve Sword. We're going to need to back up a little bit, get some PvE involved. And we see very, very strong aggression coming from these Phantoms. They're really just ignoring all the PvE. And we're able to get a roll catch with Bloody Slash on one of the Phantoms, which is going to be very key. And we also knock our opponent out of their attack there with Morgoth's Curve Sword and follow it up with a quick weapon swap over to the HTS, which allows us to get a, a very nice chase down there. Uh, having that swap on lock and just being able to kind of incorporate it into, you know, moments like that or is going to make your playstyle very, very strong and allow for, you know, chase downs that are, are much, much faster than you know, if you were just running the Flamberge, and that can really save your life. If you're able to get those chase downs very, very quickly, then that means you're going to be in a great spot to, you know, turn a 3v1 into a 2v1 or a 2v1 into a 1v1, and that can totally change the course of the invasion. So there we see some phenomenal aim punch coming in from the claws as the Crozier Hammer just misses completely, goes over our head. So we love to see that as an invader, and we do get Bloody Slash off to finish off that phantom. This next 3v1 is going to be a fairly tense one. Uh, we see a lot of different things going on. So we have uh, a mage as one phantom. We also have a player running dual cross Naginatas, but they're also fat rolling. Uh, they managed to land giant hunt. So it, it's kind of pure chaos at the beginning here. We decide that being in this room where a lot of different things are coming our way is not going to be the most practical place to kind of aggress. So we back off a little bit, go for some attacks with the Poison Dismiss, get that AR boost, and then switch over to Bloody Slash. We were kind of hoping they'd be aggressive there. Cross Naginata players are usually pretty aggressive, but they decided to back off and go for Giant's Flame Take Thee, which uh, is another strong option. So this, they are fat rolling, but they have very high damage potential. Uh, it's a little bit scary. They switch over to a Pulley Crossbow as well, so there's some projectiles coming my way. Uh, <laughs> there's just quite a bit going on, and I was... Um, a little bit surprised here that we were able to come out on top for this particular invasion. Uh, we do start to back off a little bit. We know there's some PvE back here, so that can be kind of helpful to add to the chaos and have some help on our side, which is going to be instrumental in, you know, being able to navigate this successfully. We do land one great bow shot, which is going to just do a little bit of chip damage. We weren't, you know, expecting to get a kill or anything, but the chip damage that we can get in a moment like that is going to be very helpful. And we do you almost die here from both the Power Stance Curve Swords as well as the Cross Naginatas. And there we get some nice help from the PvE and are able to get the Bloody Slash attack off and finish off one Phantom. So uh, that turns this into a 2v1. And kind of the duration of this, I was really, really understanding this player with the Cross Naginatas to be the host. They were or be the phantom they were playing very much like the phantom they were kind of defending this other player who was just kind of dealing with pve and not really taking any notice of the invader so the play style of this player was very much more phantomy and the play style of the other player was very much hosty but uh, as you will see in a couple minutes here as we begin the chase down on this player, I was in fact wrong. We're dealing with the host right here, so maybe the fat rolls should have given it away, but uh, we do have time to kill the host and go for a chase down on this phantom that completely neglected their duties and just played against the PvE and, you know, didn't protect the host at all. So, uh, interesting moment there. And now we're going to be moving on to the last invasion of the showcase. Uh, we have potentially an AFK Phantom that we're going to be going after here. And we'll be seeing some of the <laughs> most fun plays from a, from a blue that I've seen in a long time. Um, we'll be fast forwarding through a lot of this invasion. But I think it will be kind of enjoyable to just see the entire fast forward uh, part because it, it was something for sure. So we're using some sleep plots, uh, which is going to be pretty nice to just, you know, <laughs> kind of de decompress some of the pressure in this situation. And we're actually going to be landing that sleep proc on the, the host in the back, which gives us the time we need to go after the phantom. And now the blue starts coming in. And I'm not sure how many times they used waves of gold, but that's why I fast forwarded because it was absolutely non-stop it was quite absurd i do recommend double rolling if you can sometimes if you're on a hill you have a chance of jumping over it if it is coming up the hill and you're going down the hill that kind of extends your time in the air so it can be a little bit safer but this blue did nothing but waves of gold and 
you know, at a certain point, I um, <laughs> kind of wised up a little bit, saw that there was a place in my environment where there is a platform, which meant maybe the waves of gold wouldn't go up the platform. How waves of gold behaves in different areas is always kind of surprising. Like it will go upstairs. Sometimes it won't be able to go up a platform. Uh, it's, you know, just a little bit of anyone's guess as to how it's gonna work out. So here, as they go for their final waves of gold attack, we one shot them with a jumping attack. So uh, we just kind of applaud that play style. We love to see it. It's uh, very interesting, very unique, and uh, just a great time for everybody. So we do see some tea bags coming in from the host who also just kind of appreciated what the blue was doing. And we begin our chase down now that both the blue and the phantom are no longer with us. And it's not too bad. We can be a little bit patient and just kind of avoid the incoming eruptions. And finally, we do land the pseudo combo with bloody slash and the running heavy attack from the two handed greatsword. So uh, a fun invasion there. And that will conclude the invasion portion of the showcase. All right, so moving on to the dual portion of the showcase, we're going to really be trying to use this full build and just kind of maximize our damage output with both the bleed setup and the poison setup, but that's not always gonna be practical just because duels are a lot shorter than invasions and you only have one player. So here we're able to land the proc with our offhand weapon being the venomous fang and that's going to mean deadly poison is now applied so uh, a really nice kind of way to chip in a duel and we've switched over to our blood loss setup there using an hts so we switch over to ours as well you'll also notice that some of our swaps are going to be a little bit slower in some of these so i was still getting used to the build for some of these duels but as you kind of play with it more you'll notice your swaps are going to get much much faster and much much more fluid so we'll be you know landing our poison proc on this player pretty early they're using a, a lot of magic here so it's going to be prudent to potentially switch over to an hts but they do kind of delay their uh usage of their magic so it, it's not really necessary they haven't really switched over to a full passive play style and we're able to use the reduvia to get a blood loss proc and the poison is still ticking away so we can just kind of back off give them a bow as there's nothing really they can do there's not enough time to ball us and we come out with a successful duel as well there so moving on we have a player running full bull goat and they're going for some parry spam so we land the poison proc early we don't get parried which is great and then we go for a jumping attack and we're we're varying up our timings to avoid getting parried so we're you know switching off between our main hand attack as well as our dagger which comes out very very quickly and that's going to be enough to win against that player so moving on to our next duel we're going to you know again go for that early poison proc we don't land it with our ash of war but we are just kind of utilizing the different different uh, elements of this build we get the offhand proc with venomous uh, fangs which means that we again are delivering the deadly poison and here we don't find it necessary to switch over to the blood loss build up there is innate bleed on the occult flamberge that we're using with poisonous mist so we're still getting you know a lot of blood loss there and you know switching over to bloody slash wasn't really necessary and frequently wasn't necessary i would say in duels it would be more prudent to make the swap over to the hts uh, the bloody helis that is and maybe go for the bloody slash but it, it's you know it's much much more risky in a duel where you're not going to get any health back and it is going to take some of your health and by the time you're kind of set up with this build to go for bloody slash you're maybe better off just aggressing with something that's a little bit of a safer option because you aren't going to need all that damage. So that said, we do swap over to something with Bloody Slash and we go for uh, Bloody Slash and we do actually frame it and catch them for the... Um, the full half of their health left. So uh, a nice moment there. Bloody Slash can be framed if your opponent is strafing around you. It may be kind of the way to go to just kind of predict where they're going to end up and try to Bloody Slash in that direction. So here we get the early poison proc with a nice hyper armor trade. And here we do some frames with the flamberge. So I do recommend, you know, turning your body to just kind of speed up the initial hitbox frames. So, you know, turn to the right for your first attack and the left for your next attack just so it comes out that much faster and there we were able to land a couple of attacks kind of due to that free aiming so uh, a good way to go there next up we have a player with cross naginatas as well as the white mask so uh, just a, a really fun build that we love to see in the arena uh, we are going to play you know fairly defensively those weapons are you know not something to mess around with they can do so much damage and going for jump attacks is definitely going to be a good play they're very easy to jump over i'm um, relatively i mean they're a very difficult weapon to play against just in general but 
uh, being able to jump over them is going to be one of the, the best tactics you can employ. Uh, there they go for a bolus. They end up using a sleep bolus, which just kind of cracked me up because there is no sleep involved in this uh, particular build. But we are able to get the poison proc as well as a blood loss proc. And now they're very low on health. We don't really need to aggress at this point just because they are, you know, gradually being chipped. But we do get the... Uh, victory over that player as well and you know just the very strong burst damage associated with both poison and bleed it's it's going to be great um one thing i do want to mention is that i don't usually run bleed build ups um builds and maybe it's a little late to say this in the showcase but um i think the game has been out long enough and um from software has been kind of you know, they haven't adjusted bleed through over nine patches. So uh, it's, you know, where they want it to be at. And I would also say that it's, <laughs> I was kind of expecting this to be a walk in the park. Like I expected the AR boost to be super easy and bleed to just be insane. And I think it is kind of insane if you're running like cross Naginatas, but um, it does still require uh, some effort and skill to run a build like this. Uh, it was not a build that I felt was much, much easier than other builds. I'd say Power Stance Straight Swords to me felt like a build that was just very easy to run and didn't require a lot of thought or effort or skill uh, to be successful with. And I did not feel that way about this build. So maybe it's just because I haven't been running bleeds since games were released, but um, I just wanted to mention that. Like, obviously there's extreme burst damage potential, but the effort required to get it there uh, is substantial in some cases. Uh, <laughs> if you use Reduvia Blood Blade, like, that's going to make things much easier. Uh, there are ways to use bleed builds that just feel a little bit broken for sure. But to me, uh, this build, you know, didn't feel like it was absolutely the easiest thing to use in the world. And uh, I hope if you give it a try, you, you know, both have success with it, but also appreciate... Um, that it's not extremely easy to, to be successful with, or maybe it's harder to be successful with than you may be expecting. So uh, moving back into the duel portion, uh, we do have a player that's running a, a great sword, so we do like to see that. And there we get the pseudo combo with the running heavy attack into Bloody Slash. So uh, a good moment there to incorporate that with this uh, build in particular. And here we're going to be looking at the last duel of the showcase. So here we do get Bloody Slash, or um, Poison's Mist, and then quickly swip switch over to our Bloody Slash as well as our offhand Reduvia. And I played this player a number of times. They're they definitely a, a good player and I just kind of enjoyed our fights. Um, but we are going to be, you know, going for that running heavy attack true combo if we can, or pseudo combo rather, but we don't really need to, and we're able to deliver the blood loss proc and come out with a successful duel. As always, if you made it this far, I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate all the support, and I hope you have a good one.